James, you mentioned bricks. And that was the kind of the, 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 to me, right, you're seeing Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping, emperor for life, right? And they're shaking hands. And they had the full, you know, the full state ceremony. Um, and I think, I think it was a hot mic, right, where Putin was caught basically saying, you know, we want to end this 100-year-old reign, they're signaling that they're going to use uh, uh, Russia specifically going to use the yuan to facilitate international trade. Mm -hmm. So did the U.S. get itself in trouble because they weaponized the dollar? What's going on over there? One hundred percent. I mean, that they the when when we turn around and cut off uh, Russia and uh, and we seize their assets that that made every single country who's on, you know, in the gray area from with the United States question whether or not they want to be holding treasuries like do i want to hold something that the u.s can seize that's sitting at the new york fed do i want do what do i really want to do that probably not especially if i'm if i'm a country that's kind of on the fringe if i'm china definitely not you know um so this is it, it's a it's a problem that nobody's talking about well that nobody had been really talking about except bitcoiners over the last year and then suddenly cnn and and Greg made a good good point this morning. If CNN is talking about it, man, this is this is on this is on the the uh, the minds of the White House. This is not, a, and you know, and the Treasury. This this is one of the things they probably talked about this weekend. Like, we need to we need to shore up the Treasury because if 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 you have uh, if you have large buyers internationally that are stepping away from the Treasury market. You're already crowding out the 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 private buyers, the pension funds, the endowments. Like there's their balance sheets are only so big, and the banks are now you know they're in trouble. They can't just be buying treasuries. So it it it's a uh, it's kind of a perfect storm right now, uh, and it, it it is it is alarming. It's alarming. So the question is, does do do the other oil providers, the exporters? Like Saudi Arabia, do they do they join this new um, you know currency that's kind of being put together between Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa? Do they join and Iran and uh, and and Saudi Arabia? Because if they do, man, that is going to be a really really uh, powerful blow, negative blow to the U.S. Treasury. But Greg, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, no, I'll, I, I have nothing to add there, um, but let's not overthink this. This is happening, okay? And you need to get, I'll take it one step further. I think Putin already is planning to price oil and natural gas in Bitcoin because fiats are all debasing, okay? Whether you have the best looking horse at the glue factory, which is the US dollar and the petrodollar versus other even worse fiats, they're all debasing. The solution is actually to sell oil and natural gas priced in Bitcoin. So you get Bitcoin digital energy as payment for your natural resource energy. Why? Well, because it's like a closed loop. OK, think of a physics, uh, a closed system in physics and open systems don't work, which is to say a leaky hydraulic system that's open where you can print more money, that's a leaky open system versus a hydraulic system that's closed where you pay digital energy for natural resource energy. That's the stuff that a uh, engineer like myself or most, some physicists, maybe not all of them, but certainly Michael Saylor eloquently describes this. So this is just an interim step. All fiats are debasing people because all fiats have the same problem of the US dollar. They've borrowed too much money. They have to print money, just interest expense on the debt. So the debt is growing organically just because of the coupon on the debt. Same in every country in the world because total global debt is four times as large as global GDP. It's simple math. Okay, go ahead, you guys. And, and it, yeah, and then here's another here's another you know thought of you were asking earlier, Nico, about the banks and the bank situation in Europe. Here's something: there were there were over fifteen trillion dollars of negative yielding debt, and that's 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 nominal yield out in Europe, not even two years ago. So just think through that for a second. And all of these banks with these rates that have risen so rapidly. How do you think the balance sheets of Europe are doing? 
How do you think the pension funds are doing out there? They've got these assets that are that are marked so deeply negative. It, it's actually pretty scary. I, I would not want to be in the European banking system right now. That it, it, it's it, there's a disaster there waiting to happen. We just don't know which one it is and when. Banks in, in North America are generally levered around 20 to 25 times their equity base. Europe is over 30 and sometimes as high as 40 times their equity base, which is another way of saying if the assets on the bank lose only two and a half percent, they're done. Okay, gone. It's over. They're insolvent, just like Credit Suisse. So this is crazy, guys. Understand that banks are always levered, especially when they bring off balance sheet assets into the equation, which are the derivatives we've talked about and everything. It is so, so severe that a couple of little cracks here and there and the whole system falls apart. Why do you think they were so nervous about CSFB or Credit Suisse rather? Because when Credit Suisse waivers, all their counterparties like Deutsche Bank and BNP and, uh, you know, the big European banks, they catch uh, a cold as well. And if Deutsche Bank goes down and the credit default swap market was saying they had some uh, some stresses, if Deutsche Bank goes down, there's nobody that's going to combine with Deutsche Bank. It has to combine with the country of Germany. OK, it's that simple. There is no other bank that's going to combine with Deutsche Bank. So. Thank <laughs> you.